Hi, I'm Matt Olson, restoration ecologist at the Lake County Forest Preserves. I'm here today to give you some tips for fall buckthorn identification, buckthorn berries, and a simple strategy to help you get started with buckthorn removal. Common or European buckthorn is an invasive large shrub or small tree. It was introduced to North America in the 1800s as an ornamental shrub and hedgerow. As you can see behind me, buckthorn grows in dense thickets, which can deprive native plants of sunlight, water, and other nutrients. It also harms other organisms by releasing a chemical called emodin from every part of the plant. Because of these and other negative effects buckthorn has on native plants and animals, we here at the Forest Preserve are trying to eradicate buckthorn from Lake County. The truth is, we can't reach that goal without private landowners removing buckthorn from their properties as well. Fall is a good time to identify buckthorn and plan for removal efforts over the winter. One tip is to look for plants that are still green well into November, such as this thicket here. Even, even as native oak, hickory, maple, and other trees are changing color and dropping their leaves, buckthorn holds onto its green leaves for a while past that point. Look for a ribbon of green vegetation shorter than the canopy trees above. Much of this is likely buckthorn or another exotic invader, honeysuckle. Buckthorn has oval or egg-shaped, shiny, small-toothed leaves with prominent veins and a pointed tip. They grow in a sub-opposite pattern, meaning that when you look at a branch, the leaves and twigs on either side of it grow both directly opposite and alternate from one another. As you can see on this twig, there are some spots where the, the leaves are growing opposite of each other and other spots along the stem where there's an offset or where they're alternating. As an example, uh, this is a twig from a native dogwood where it's always opposite. You can see the small twigs and even as you get larger and even the leaves, although this is late in the fall and it's already dropped its leaves, you would notice it's always opposite. There are always leaves and twigs opposite from one another. Uh, oaks exhibit an alternating pattern, which you can see here uh, where the, the leaves are alternating and the buds are alternating up and down the stem. Uh, so this is an example of how plants are different and buckthorn has that unique characteristic of showing uh, opposite characteristics and alternate characteristics, which is called a sub-opposite pattern. Another tip to ensure you're identifying buckthorn correctly is to look for the quarter inch glossy black fruits that are on the plants from September through November. Unfortunately, the fruits have a diuretic or laxative effect on birds that eat them, so they offer very little nutrition and are often expelled sooner than other berries. This brings buckthorn seeds to newer places faster, and those seeds remain viable in the soil for a whopping two to six years. And finally, you can look at buckthorn bark. On the outside, young stems have gray-brown bark with small white gray dots called lenticels, which you can see here. Uh, as plant ages, the bark turns to a darker charcoal, gray, or black in color, and lenticels have, have start to grow and split and reveal this uh, peely or flaky appearance. Uh, if you cut into a buckthorn plant, the interior of the bark is a distinctive orange color, which really isn't found in any other woody plants in Lake County. Which you can see here. Once you're confident you have buckthorn on your property, you mark the individuals that you want to remove later in the winter. You can tie a small colored ribbon to the branches. You can even use a small pin flag to mark the base of the individuals that you want to remove. Or even use a water-based spray paint to mark the individuals. Another trait of buckthorn is that it's dioecious. This means that male and female plants are separate from each other. We recommend removing female plants first since they produce the berries that keep buckthorn populations going and growing. Removal can be gradual. It doesn't have to happen all at once or overnight. Rather, you can take your time and remove a group of plants each year, starting with the berry producing plants first. This helps break the cycle of buckthorn perpetuating itself on your property and throughout the landscape. Whether you move it all at once or slowly, the important thing is to start removing this invasive species. There are many native plant species you can plant to replace buckthorn, from ground level plants to larger shrubs and trees. Some of my favorites are wild plum, any native species of hawthorn, American hazelnut, wild black currant, witch hazel, and butterfly weed. Even more plants are listed in our Healthy Hedges brochure, which can be found online at lcfpd.org buckthorn and in paper form at the Forest Preserve's general offices in Libertyville. Learn more about buckthorn eradication on our website at lcfpd.org buckthorn and follow us on social media at LCFPD. Additionally, my colleagues and I are happy to answer buckthorn related questions specific to your property. Please email your questions to us at healthyhedges at lcfpd.org. Thanks for watching.